Are you sitting at your workbench scratching your head looking for something fun to do? We're going to help you out. Don't go away. All right, I know it. I, I, I know the feeling. I, I, I've been there. All of us have been there, okay? You're sitting at your workbench, just kind of sitting there staring around, looking at stuff, hoping for some inspiration. What do I want to do next? Well, I could work on that car over there, or I could do this print over here. But, you know, just nothing is coming to you. Nothing sounds fun. You're really kind of just bleh. Well, we're going to help you out with that, because what we're going to do is we're going to take and do a simple, fun, functional project over at the 3D printer. So let's get right to it. So are you sitting around wondering, what, what should I do with myself today? You don't really have anything hot going or anything like that. Well, why don't we turn to our 3D printer for a little bit of fun? Here I am on Thingiverse, and I'm looking at this can holder dice mug. And I've seen these a couple times, and look at that. That's actually really, really very cool. The original idea was for it to be a, uh, a thing for uh, gamers to roll dice with. But quickly it became a can holder and or a dice mug. So from Thingiverse, I've downloaded the file. And once I've got it downloaded, I can open it up in Cura because I'm going to go ahead and just print this on an FDM printer. How can I get away with that, you ask? Well, first of all, I'm going to print it fine uh, using uh, the fine setting, but also it's made out of wood and hand-hammered uh, metals and uh, you know bone and stuff like that. So the texture from the FDM printer I don't think is going to really be a problem. So in Cura, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure it's placed properly on the bed. I'm going to check all my settings. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and slice the model and save the file out so that I can start the printing process. So I'm going to be printing this on my Creality Ender 3. And uh, this gives me a great opportunity to talk about your filament choice. This is a... a a beer barrel so to speak and it's got a handle and people are gonna be handling it they're gonna be rolling dice or using it to drink drink from and uh, so no matter how well you paint this thing sooner or later through use that paints gonna start to wear out well that's why I have specifically chosen to use black filament to print this in by using black filament the uh, uh, as the paint wears off, you're going to see black underneath it, and it's really not going to impact uh, the finished product. At least not at the beginning. It's just going to kind of give it a a worn look, and it should work really well, uh, even though you know all the paint job is is being worn off. So um, it's it's important to remember what color uh, filament you're using underneath your projects if you intend to paint them. And you intend to use them, you know, you just need to give your projects a little bit of a thought. So I'm using the black filament, and we've chosen to print this. And uh, here you go. We'll uh, we'll come back after the ender is almost done with this sucker. But you can see it's coming along nicely. Well, this thing is printing really, really nicely. I'm super excited about it. Uh, feeling very good. Whoever modeled this did a great job. Um, I'm probably going to put a link right here uh, to whoever uh, model this is uh, to give them the credit, but they did a great job. All right, so here is my mug off of the printer, and uh, we've cleaned up any last strings or anything like that, and now we're going to go ahead and get down to painting this thing. Okay, so for the base color, I'm just going to use a nice uh, flat Tamiya brown paint and a wide brush, and I'm just going to basically get all of the beer barrel parts painted, um, making sure I do a good thorough job inside all the crooks and crevices, although it really won't matter in the end because if a little black is showing, 
it's just going to add some uh, life and and uh, you know interest into the paint job. So you you, you know you want to get a good good paint job going here, but you really also don't need to stress about this. You don't need to be Van Gogh to do this. In fact, you could print these up. And let's say you want to give four people these things. You could print these up, hand them to your kids, and say, "Have at it." And they're all going to look fantastic. So uh, we're just going to rock some Tamiya flat brown on here. And then we'll move on to the next colors. So you absolutely want to make sure you do paint the upper lip. But you don't need to paint down into the uh, barrel. In fact, I think uh, other than just the very inner lip... <coughs> I think anything further down than that is a mistake and a waste of a lot of effort, so skip that. Now I've got some, to me, a copper. Uh, that's my chosen color for the banding. You could use silver or gold leaf or whatever floats your boat. I thought the copper looked really nice and rustic. And so I'm going to paint these, uh, these bands that go around the barrel in this copper. And... It's it's great. You got to paint the surface of them, but you're also going to have to kind of paint the lip a little bit. You don't have to be too much so over it, but you sure don't want to just ignore that. Now it is my impression that all of the hardware is this same copper, with the exception of the piece in the middle of the handle. I see that as a piece of like a an animal tooth or a piece of bone or something like that and so I'm gonna paint that a different color but other than that this entire thing is either brown or copper and here you can better see what I was talking about about painting the edges of the uh, the banding if, if you leave those, it's going to look sloppy and unkempt, and, and it's just going to look like you were lazy. So make sure you paint those. Uh, that takes a little bit more of a steady hand, so that might be when you want to help the kids out. But uh, at this point, you really need to paint those, those banded edges. So here you get a good glimpse of the base of the uh, the stein or mug or whatever we're calling this thing, and uh, that just got me to thinking that uh, don't don't hesitate if you feel like putting some cork on the bottom or some rubber feet on the bottom or just leaving it plain like I did. Any of that is going to work. It just depends on what you feel like and how you want your mug to come out. And here I'm just using a little bit of an old bone or tooth kind of a color uh, to, to paint this in with. Um, you know, it, again, it doesn't need to be really neat. That's the glory of this thing because, you know, it's going to have wear and tear. And as some of that black starts to show through, it's just going to look amazing. So um, just put it on. Make sure you get a good, nice, even coverage. Uh, I always mix my, my paint down with a little bit of water to make it paint on nicer, but uh, this is going to work out perfect. Okay, so after painting the tooth a sort of an old bone color, I'm using a lighter kind of a wood colored, like a tan, and I'm, I'm doing a dry brush technique. And basically what that means is I dip the brush into some paint and dab almost every bit of it off the brush. Then I lightly swipe the brush against the grain and right there you can see it doing it really well right there. See how it starts to highlight the upper edges? That's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to highlight the upper edges so that we have a lighter color on the upper edges then a, a deeper brown and then even deeper down in the grooves and cracks. So this is called dry brushing and we're going to do it all over the wood planks. And there you can see the, the tooth color I opted to use.
Here I felt like the uh, the tooth or the bone or whatever this thing is felt a little bit thin to me. So I'm just going to give it a, a little bit of a second coat just to make sure it looks right. So once this is done, we're going to let it sit aside to dry very thoroughly. And then we're going to go ahead and hit it up with a couple coats of a nice flat varnish. All right, there it is, the beer barrel uh, dice rolling cup or mug. Or Well, it's not a mug, you know, don't drink out of it. Can holder, all right? So I got pieces. <laughs> I've got pieces of my Terminator arm in there. Okay, so ignore that. But anyhow, it was a fun little project, and I use it all the time. When I, I have a can of soda or a beer or whatever, I pop it inside this and I set it on my table right next to me. You've seen me use it in, in some of my live streams, I'm sure. Uh, a fun project. I really enjoyed it. It's one where you don't have to be so serious. You can see the print lines in there and stuff like that. And it just doesn't matter because of the nature of this project. It's wood, old wooden staves and and ham, ham, uh, hand hammered uh bands to hold it together with some kind of an animal tooth and stuff like that. So as, as rustic as it can come out, it's going to be awesome. And it's a lot of fun to do. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. If you see the little bell floating over here, click that. And you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to talk with you guys. I really do try to answer all of your questions. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions wishing you an amazing, productive day where you can have a little fun and maybe take things back and remove a little stress and just enjoy what you're doing. All right, until next time, this is Paul saying goodbye and be good.